Hi, I'd like to explain my two new resources for the latest stage four technology syllabus updates. Then I'll explain how I plan for them to be used. The two resources are this book and the teacher's lesson presentation interactive PDF that I'll use for this video. This is the interactive PDF. And as you can see, I've uh, linked all of the headings there so that when the teacher it's a link for a lesson, up comes that particular page. And down the bottom right, I have the contents linked um, on the bottom right of the page, and it goes back to the contents. The book is composed of these sections. So I've got material experiences that I'll be explaining later, a design section, introduction to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, a brief history, work, health and safety. Uh, then I have the focus areas down here. So each of these focus areas include all of the dot points in the syllabus that I've provided information on. And then at the end of the book, I've got the design folio and the engineering report. The suggested sequence that I've used in the book and found to be very effective is, first of all, the teachers explain the course requirements and the design project, which has been developed by the teacher. Students are then introduced to the workshop and workplace area and instructed in safety. So the teacher would go to the work health and safety section of the book and have a lesson on this. Then they would be directed to the safety test, which would be relevant to the material they're using for their design project. And we'll go to the timber safety test as an example. And so the students read these uh, statements and tick if it's correct, cross it if it's wrong. So guards on machines do not have to be inspected before starting a machine. And that would be crossed because it's a wrong statement. And the student has to get all this correct. Um, they print their name down the bottom, sign it, and then the teacher checks that it is 100% correct and then it is filed away. And this has been proved to be a very good method because I had an incident where a student cut his finger on a bandsaw because he had the guard incorrectly adjusted. And the next day, the parent, the solicitor and the insurance agent turned up. And as soon as I showed them the safety test and he had this question here, marked correctly, they were convinced that uh, he was adequately instructed in safety. And so I was very relieved. Based on this statement, a good product designer must have a wide experience with different materials. It seems logical that students require basic knowledge and skills with materials that they'll be using for their design project. So I've provided introductory material experiences for polymers, timbers, metal, textiles, and food. So the students are given simple tasks to do so that they can develop their skills in the material that they will be using. So let's use wood as an example. So they are provided with a bit of background information on timber, the method of joining, and the uh, they go to the practical exercise, which is the material experience. And uh, they're given this piece of timber. They're shown how dimensions work, and they're asked to make this uh, simple exercise. And all they have to do is join that piece to that piece there. They can use any of these joints, but I try to push them into a housing joint so that um, they can check whether it fits correctly. And then they're asked to test it. 
Now, some students have used nails to join it, have used screws, have used the housing joint, and they've used glue. And so we compare the strength of each of their exercises. And we do this by hanging a 20 litre drum off the cantilever and then just pouring water in and see which one takes the most uh, force. And it is quite a fun exercise and it's part of the syllabus because the students are asked to test their design project, conduct tests on the project or on the elements of the project. It's unreasonable to ask stage four students to sketch their ideas for the design project when they do not have basic drawing skills. So I've provided an introduction to graphics section in the book. So here's the introduction to the graphics section. And I always, uh, when I'm teaching elementary drawing, I always make sure that each student has a 3D example of what they're drawing. And I encourage teachers to use something like this. So I always use the step block with a hole in and uh, they're asked to draw that in uh, uh, pictorial. Uh, I use isometric. Then I've provided steps in constructing a presentation graphic if they want to display their major project that they've done for this uh, focus area. Then we go into orthogonal, where the students will draw an orthogonal of the step block. And then we go down to CAD and then they do a CAD drawing of the step block here and then uh, do a screenshot of it and uh, they can apply it uh, to this part of the book down here. The next step after the students have developed skill, practical skills in the workshop and design skills um, in designing their material experience via drawing. Uh, the next step is to go over basic design and uh, the students are directed to this uh, area of the book and uh, I always use acronyms uh, for factors influencing design and the design, pro the design processes. Uh, safe design, simple, appropriate, functional, economical and I use uh, there's some exercises there for them to do to reinforce safe design. And then the design processes, um, uh, there are many of them, and that depends on the product that they're designing. They generally fit into this acronym that I've developed, D-E-S-I-G-N-E-D. And I've shown how a simple design challenge fits into that acronym and a complex design challenge fits into that acronym, D-E-S-I-G-N-E-D. That covers an introduction to the practical areas of the course. To cover the syllabus content areas for each focus area, I've provided brief notes on each syllabus dot point, and these are shown in the lesson register at the beginning of each focus area. So these are the focus areas here, and you can see that I've provided a lesson register. We'll have a look at engineering technologies and systems. And so there is the linked dot points, the page reference where the student can quickly go to, and a date here when that particular lesson is complete, and the teacher will use that. None of these are linked because they're related to the design project. So you can hit uh, collect data. This is a dot point from the syllabus and I've provided the data on this particular dot point here. And at the end of each dot point, I've provided a formative task because the syllabus specifically mentions formative and summative tasks. I call it formative task page 165. That's the page that the task is on. And the students answer these questions from 
the information given on page 163, 164. And I find it a very effective way of reinforcing the lesson when the students actually have to answer these questions. I advise the teacher to do the solutions to these questions, write them out, put them up on the data projector, and then mark it as a class, or it could be marked collaboratively, and then uh, the student use this marking scale to select the grades. Uh, the student puts a name there um, and the date. And then when the teacher has checked it, that uh, it, they've allocated a correct uh, grade on the common grade scale, the teacher will sign it and record that particular grade. And at the end of each task, I have each focus area, sorry, I have a summative task, which is, summarizes the whole focus area. And uh, the teacher gets the students to do the 10 questions and uses this marks and grades uh, for the summative task, um, exactly the same as for the formative task. The cost of the book and the interactive PDF uh, for one to five books, it's $30. Six to 50 books, it's 25 And greater than 50 it's of reduced down to 20 which is just above the production cost uh, because it uh, will work much more effectively if the students each have a book. The teacher's interactive lesson digital presentation is $400 for a site license. So that covers the all of the school. And it's an effective way of coordinating the approach from all the technology teachers in the school, as well as helping those teachers who, who aren't trained in our area to who are required to teach the course.